Ubisoft has been in the headlines quite often this year, and there's one thing that I can definitively say, and something that we're not very surprised about, is the business practices of Ubisoft as a company. I think we're all very well aware that this is not anything new Ubisoft has done previously. You guys remember Far Cry 6? And they started charging over like $100 for their deluxe editions and basically anything outside of standard, you're going to be paying more than $100. And then they came, they had the audacity to come out with the Game of the Year edition. Mind you, I love the Far Cry series. With the announcement of Star Wars Outlaws and the release of X Defiant, and of course, who can forget the reveal of Assassin's Creed Shadows. Finally, the long awaited AC game that we've been waiting for, set in Japan involving Shinobi Samurai. In this case, with this announcement, the main thing that I see online is the fact that there are two protagonists and there's a coalition of people online who don't like that <laughs> let's just put it that way right we're not gonna cover that here what we're gonna cover is the fact that ubisoft this is very calculated mind you uh, for context i have eight years in advertising four of which were in entertainment uh, which includes video games this is all very calculated when you release a trailer like that and you have the amount of money and the teams as large as Ubisoft. Ubisoft? You can you can plan for something like that. Now what's going on while the rabble rouse is going up top? What's happening underneath all that behind the curtains? We all know this. The increase in pricing of both Star Wars Outlaws and Assassin's Creed Shadows. In this case, with Star Wars Outlaws, they are blocking content unless you are willing to pay for the uh, deluxe, uh, the deluxe edition plus anything over standard. You are going to miss content. If you are not willing to spend more than seventy dollars for taxes. In this case, what they are saying is, if you are not willing to pay over a hundred dollars for a game, and this is a Star Wars IP, mind you. There is a portion of the game that you will not be able to experience. And the main communication around the blocking of content is the fact that it's not super important. So since it's not a super important part of the story, then why are you blocking? Why are you charging people extra money? Why are you blocking it? Right? That has already come and gone. But here we are with Assassin's Creed Shadows. And they are doing the same thing. In this case, a little different. They may not be blocking content. However, they are doing every single thing outside of an early access. They are dropping a season's pass. Three days early access. Uh, anything over standard editions are going to be over $70 into the $130. But what is the main thing that you're seeing here that was mentioned what feels like a couple of months ago. Do you guys remember when the Ubisoft executive said, quote, gamers need to get comfortable not owning their games or subscriptions to take off. For subscriptions to take off. I'm just like, re really think about that for a second. Any Ubisoft game that you go to nowadays, the main thing that they are going to push you, push at you at the moment is Ubisoft Plus, whether it's Ubisoft Premium, Ubisoft Classic. In an interview from GI Biz, the director of subscriptions at Ubisoft, Felipe Trembley, and I quote, I don't have a crystal ball. When you look at the different subscription services that are out there, we've had rapid expansion over the last couple of years, but it's still relatively small compared to the other models. 
Now, why am I bringing this up? Why am I bringing this up? Preservation is not something that I thought I would be thinking about or talking about when it comes to games. I started digitally purchasing games because they were cheaper. You weren't being charged at extra taxes. So while I may lose a physical edition and the extra perks that come with having a physical copy, uh, the booklet, right? You usually get a code for some kind of extra bonus. I was willing to forego that so that I could pay a little bit less money to play, to enjoy the base game. That is not the same as blocking content that people are paying, that you're forcing people to pay extra for, right? None of this is making sense to me at the moment. It's insane. Like, it, it, I don't know what world these executives live in, but it's it just doesn't sound like they play video games. You know what I mean? Like, what? Like, could you could you imagine? Could you imagine if I was like, yo, I want to sell you these like 12 glazed donuts, right? However, however, if you want like the, the sprinkles and the fancy donuts, you got to pay extra for it. In this case, that makes sense, right? However, what the difference is, I'm still receiving a donut at the end of the day. This isn't any, like, I'm not missing out on anything except icing. That's extra. In this case, this analogy, that extra content isn't icing. It's literally part of the donut. So what you're doing is you're taking a bite out of the donut and saying, this is what we're going to give you for 70. And unless you're willing to give us more money so that you can experience a game that you've already paid for, you got to give us 30 extra dollars for it. It's insane, right? I sound crazy saying this. Wrapping my head around the fact that Ubisoft is openly saying we don't own these games. Not only that, we got to get used to the fact that we're going to lose access to these games. I.e. the crew. The crew is a great example of that. Let's not get it twisted, however. Ubisoft knows that with IPs like Star Wars and Assassin's Creed, these are going to sell like hotcakes. These are going to sell like Girl Scout cookies in front of the dispensary. There is no if, ands, or buts about it, right? And the main thing that is the discourse that is happening online is more tailored to the idea that people are willing to support the two protagonists uh, representation versus going against these very predatory business practices that are being included in single player games right guess what this game's gonna require an online connection right you may be able to experience the game later but if you want the updates you want all that shit the season pass you need it online you need to be online mind you us as console players for you non-PC players, we have to pay for Wi-Fi and the PSN subscription. And if you're if you're yelling at your screen and be like, you broke boy, get your money up. I agree. I agree. Maybe I should be more like Ubisoft. Take inspiration from their business practices. You know what I mean? Well, you get where I'm where I'm headed here, right? It's it's these are it's just getting out of control. And if there's one thing that defines this current generation of games, content as a whole, not even video games, you know, movies, right? Uh, cable, they're like subscription services have become cable, essentially. Everything that we were trying to avoid, commercials, right? Uh, let, don't even get me started on elect EA trying to add thoughtful ads into our games. Right For my 2K and FIFA players and Madden players out there, we already know that there's already going to be a ton of advertisements in the game. Don't even get me started on 2K TV and those unskippable ads in the sports games. Yo, don't even get me started. Right. So what is happening now is everything that we're seeing on the internet, like there's going to be, there's no ad blocker for consoles and pieces. You know what I mean? Like we can't block these ads from our games. There's no workaround. So the more that 
we're allowing these studios to get away with this and by get away i mean pre-ordering the games you know what i mean uh not just pre-ordering the games but buying it on multiple platforms so on and so forth like the we as content consumers the only way that we can really revolt is by showing it with our wallets and which is very unfortunate we were able to get a few other games to open up their doors square enix right nobody is no not not a lot of people bought uh the big square enix titles that have come out i.e ff16 i.e foam stars <laughs> but we are at a point that us as consumers i don't know about you guys like i am like this is getting out of control man this could be a very old head take because i know the generation or two uh after millennials are used to this experience they're used to the fact that everything is alive and subscription service and you know uh tailoring to that demographic i don't know how you guys feel but uh us older folks man this is this is just not this is not okay man this is like you're telling me that i'm gonna spend almost a hundred dollars let's say i buy the mac the collector's edition which is like over a hundred and thirty dollars right and you're gonna tell me someday somehow that ubisoft is gonna have the ability to take this game away from me that's insane my whole take on preservation has changed because i went from buying digital games to save money to being charged the same amount but when you go buy a physical disc like when you buy a physical copy you get like some bonuses so it's like it's just insane man like it's just it's so crazy and all i can say is don't pre-order the game we're obviously going to be playing these two games y'all these are two major releases that is going to be a part of the definition of cur of our current gaming generation right uh don't even get me started on some of the releases that are coming out i.e elden ring the new dlc that's going to come out that's going to gonna break the internet uh there's so many things that we as consumers are being exposed to in terms of business practices but are we receiving a line of content that reflects the money that we're paying for and that's really the only way that i that i can put this it's just such aggressive business tactics and here I am kind of just yapping about, but I really just wanted to, to to bring this up and I just needed to like let some air out on it because I'm so tired of I'm so tired of it, man. <laughs> I, I dropped playing games like 2K and COD because of those monetization tactics. And I hate the fact that Ubisoft has IPs like Star Wars and Assassin's Creed because they are going to squeeze the hell out of them and my only hope is that those two games over deliver not just deliver i am expecting an over delivery because the the way ubisoft is announcing their business practices to the public it takes some balls you gotta have some levels for that you know what i mean it, it's not something that you just tell the public right you kind of just do it and we've seen companies like Activision implement these business practices without really saying anything. You know what I mean? And with Ubisoft being so confident and forefront, I don't know if it's them being transparent, right? Or if it's just them saying, hey, like we're doing this, whether you like it or not. However, these games are gonna be a banger. <laughs> I'm skeptical as hell. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, and yeah, this is the weekly mead. <laughs> See you guys next week. Yeah, fuck Ubisoft. Peace.